Atop a hill near the village of Sheldon in Derbyshire sits the preserved atmospheric remains of Magpie Mine, one of the best surviving examples of a 19th century lead mine in the UK. Mid Derbyshire is a region where lead mining is dated back centuries, with Odin Mine for example being one of the oldest lead mines in all of England dating back to the 10th century at least and maybe even as early as Rome in Britain. However, Magpie Mine, the focus of today's video, dates back to the 17th century. Here stands a walled enclosure consisting of five lead mines. Magpie Mine, Dirty Red Soil, Great Red Soil, Maypit and Horse Steps. The Derbyshire Dales district is known for its turbulent mining history. This preserved look back in time provides the perfect place to soak it all in and also an ideal place to focus on when learning all about this history. A vein of lead ore was opened on the site in 1682. However, Magpie Mine's earliest recorded existence dates to 1740. It operated for over 200 years until its closure in the 1950s when lead mining in the region stagnated and upon its closure was the last operational lead mine in the county. Magpie Mine has been the setting of one or two fascinating stories of its over 200 plus known years of operation. Magpie Mine struggles began more or less when the mining did. The initial struggles on the site were to keep water out of workings. As a bit of trivia you'll absolutely never need is in 1827 800 tonnes of lead was produced at Magpie Mine, a record that remained unbroken until 1871. This was due to the installation of a Newcomb pumping engine at the main shaft. We've done a video on this children, go back through our channel and see it. Interestingly, Magpie Mine also found itself in some form of turf war. The lead veins in the region typically crossed over one another for years, there were disputes over which mines had the right to work which veins. This led to several confrontations where the paths of two mines crossed or came close to crossing. Miners from the Magpie Mine and Maypit Mine both worked the Great Red Soil Vein and would start fires underground to smoke out one another. It also helped heat the working face so that once cooled again, it would ease the lead's extraction by rendering it more brittle. These arguments ranged from underground disputes physically in the mines all the way to legal battles in the courts. This came to a head in 1833. Three Maypit miners were suffocated to death by fumes from fires started by the Magpie miners. In total, 24 miners found themselves on trial for the murder of these men. Some would be acquitted up front. Eventually, after a year in court at the Derby Assizes, all were acquitted for two reasons. The Maypit miners' actions were deemed provocative and also it seemed impossible to discern individual culprits. It also could have been any one of the 24 who started the fires and therefore it was impossible to tell which individuals would need to face consequences for the killings, intentional or not. After this, legend has it that the wives of three of the murdered men cast a curse on the mine. Interestingly, after this point, the mine never did really see itself thrive again. Regardless, mining would continue there for some time. The disputes would not end here. However, these events supposedly led to the closure of Magpie Mine in 1835. At this point, the mine had once again been hindered by floods and even a fire and many believed this was the widow's curse taking hold. Though this closure would only last four years, with the mine reopening in 1839 under the new management of renowned mining engineer John Taylor, a new complex of structures made from limestone were installed, along with modernisation equipment readily available to miners. In 1880, hoping to end the curse, the Magpie Mining Company changed its name it might sound silly, but the miners at the time are understood to have been a somewhat superstitious bunch. We have to make an offering to the stone gods. 
it's important to understand the landscape of the time here. The ores in the entire region were slowly drying up, and lead was increasingly being imported to Britain. The lucrative years of Magpie Mine were on the way out, irrespective of any widow's curse as was the industry altogether, but it's a fascinating bit of old folklore just the same. The mine fell into financial struggles in the 1880s and had to close again, reopen briefly for spells in the early decades of the 20th century before reopening once more in 1950, a spell that was far less lucrative than previous generations, almost immediately declining once more. Closing down between the years of 1954 and 58, and never to be used again. Under management of the Peak District Mines Historical Society, the site has undergone restoration and preservation work which grants us a fascinating scene today. At the site you can see the generations of work that have been carried out here. There are many mine shafts that have been blocked or capped for the safety of the public. Despite having no access to the underground tunnels, the view from the surface is impressive just the same. For example, to the east of the site stands a replica horse gin. This was powered by a horse driving a wooden shaft around a pole. There were wind cables allowing things to be raised and lowered from the mine. There's also a long engine house and winding drum. A steam engine used to drive the winding drum will pull cables allowing for items to be lifted and lowered into the mine. Then there's the headstock from back when the mine was operated in the early 1950s. Inside the headstock there's still a cage where they would lower mine carts and men into the mine. Finally there's a smithy and office, a combined office space for the mine where a blacksmith would also sharpen the miners tools. Today there are stories of hauntings at the site. A well documented encounter was recorded in the year 1946, in which a survey team working in the mine spotted what appeared to be a man holding a candle deeper in the shaft. As they watched the apparition, it simply vanished. The survey team also apparently caught a photograph that captures a shadowy figure standing atop a pool of water, though we cannot find the image anywhere online. However, the paranormal and history aren't necessarily the same thing. The history of the mine stands. If anywhere was to be haunted, why not let it be here? This place is a really pleasant place if you want to explore some old ruins from the Industrial Revolution. With most of the Industrial Revolution ruins, you can typically find all sorts of abandoned bits and pieces. You can spend hours at sites like that forming a vivid image in your mind of how life was when these locations were operational. If you find yourself passing through the Derbyshire Dales and have a couple of hours to kill, head on up to Mad Pie Mine. Admission is free as technically there isn't anything to be admitted into, it's just here. But be mindful that livestock surrounds the site and the site itself has been used for grazing. You'll need to bring some decent footwear and simply respect your surroundings. Thank you everyone for watching today's video, I hope you enjoyed watching it as I did making it. So if you like this video, like it, share it and subscribe and if you press the subscribe button, make sure you press that little bell thing to go along with it. If you've got a friend that you'd think would like our decades videos, but don't really want to watch them at this time necessarily, why don't you tie them up, take them to the magpie mines, open up one of the old shafts and put a candle on a rope and hang them over the pit and then put uh, some sort of tablet in front of their face. And if they haven't watched all our videos, by the time the candle has burnt through the rope, they'll plummet to their death and hopefully watch all of our decades videos in the land beyond. That'll be all, thank you. <laughs> it's so clapped. <laughs>